Prehistoric Philippine Writing Stamp Seals Stamp seals were used by the International Trade Network of the Bronze Age Mediterranean societies, including Mesopotamia and pretty much anybody who traded with them. Sculpted stone or hardened materials were pressed into soft clay used to seal the goods traded among ancient civilizations. Seals contained information like the port of origin, contents, or other details. The Mesopotamian Stamp Seal Network is widely considered the first language in the world, developed because of the need for accountants to track whatever was being traded. A very early contact between the Austronesians and Old World civilizations appeared to have begun soon after migrating from the lower Yangtze River area to their central port city in the Philippines and associated Austronesian-speaking neighboring lands. India's control of the gateway to the lands of gold was a very valuable asset. The peak period of their maritime activity in the Indus Valley and ancient Tamil began around 2250 BC, coinciding with the disappearance of the Austronesian Liangzhou from the southeastern part of China. Mesopotamian inscriptions indicate that Indian traders from the Indus Valley carrying copper, hardwoods, ivory, pearls, carnelian, and gold were active in Mesopotamia during the reign of Sargon of Akkad. The Ganges River of India was the gateway for travel from the Indian Ocean to the Pacific. The Austronesian bird tribes used this bottleneck to protect a lucrative trade route. Prehistoric Tamil maritime traders of India had ancient ties with the nations of Southeast Asia, with their inscriptions found as far as Indonesia of the Malay Archipelago and Thailand and Cambodia of the Malay Peninsula, known in ancient times as the Aurea Chersonesis. The lands of gold were an abundant source of all the trade items mentioned in the Mesopotamian record. Scholars have linked ancient Indus Valley civilizations with a maritime trading people called Meluha. In an inscription, Gudea of Lagash referred to the Meluhans who came to summer to sell gold dust. In mid-2019, an ancient shipwreck was found just off the coast of Mindanao that was fully loaded with a pot Filipinos call palayok, Although most of the contents of these pots have long been claimed by the strong underwater currents, these humble palayok still carry the remnants of gold dust lining the inside of them, bearing silent witness to a time when Filipino maritime ancestors traded gold in dust form to civilizations across rivers and seas. Strategically located at the point guarding the entry and exit of all goods traded from the countries to the north and west, the ancient Indian sailors may have been part of the alliance of maritime Austronesian satellite nations. The Austronesian central government appears to have established a standardized square stamp seal for their community of nations, like that used in ancient India. Each region had its own distinct type of seal, circular in Bahrain, cylindrical in Mesopotamia, square in the Indus Valley. Discovered in different islands of the Philippines, three remarkable black nephrite jade stamp seals with high iron content were masterpieces of ancient art and technology. Similarities in geological material used, form, proportions, and sizes indicate a highly structured and unified government system. A very special kind of metal diffusion is found on authentic Hongshan jade. On many Hongshan jade pieces, very often such sparkling metal spots or metal streaks can be found. This is especially true on some very black skin jades. They believe these metal spots, gold glitter, are oxidized iron formed 
on the jades. The three Philippine stamp seals found were made of this black nephrite jade with shiny golden streaks of iron which make them have a high magnetic quality. Large flecks of shiny iron are evident. The reddish-brown color observed in varying degrees on the seals were caused by the chemical surface weathering, exposure to water, resulting in the oxidation of iron. Resting on each square base is an anthropomorphic horned beast which may have represented the warrior defenders of the Austronesian bird tribes. Austronesian Batak tribes still honor the Singa with the magical power to protect from harm. The Singa was described as part water buffalo and part human. The Austronesian Liangzhou saw the circle as symbolic of heaven and the square as symbolic of earth. Thus, the square base that produces a squared seal impression was perfect for identifying the worldly goods traded by their maritime communities, overseen by their armed forces. The square Indus Valley Pashupati seal bears a similar horned anthropomorphic figure seated in a lotus position, a sitting position also observed on Philippine jade anthropomorphic horned bull artifacts. The platform base of the seal from Luzon has a plain, undecorated surface. The other two from islands in the Visayas region were embellished in the front and back. A character in low relief appears on two sides of the cubed base of one, while incised symbols yin-yang and the Big Dipper constellation are on the other. Although quite heavy, these large Austronesian Liangzhou stamp seals are surprisingly ergonomic to hold, lift up and press down to produce a seal impression on a soft medium. The three seal impressions seem to be composed of four characters made to fill the squared format. Inscriptions are not identical and appear to be giving information on different ports or trade goods. It's difficult to know the exact contents of the characters since, like the Indus Valley script, no one has yet been able to read this writing. Michael Witzel suggests that the Indus script is similar to Austroasiatic languages. Witzel argues that the Rig Veda shows signs of this hypothetical Harappan influence in the earliest historic level and Dravidian only in later levels suggesting that speakers of Austroasiatic were the original inhabitants of Punjab. Over these jade stamp seals, three anthropomorphic horned beasts watch vigilantly with eyes wide open, defenders of the past, remaining a silent witness of a literate age when Austronesians ruled the rivers and the seas of the lands of gold, carrying out international trade with civilizations across the globe, a maritime civilization that carried out the largest geographic spread over the waters of the world at a time when other cultures were still to invent the wheel. To learn more about our amazing ancestors, Download the Austronesian series of books for free at bit.ly slash jgcbooks.